boys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's not ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's go to Prague. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you wanted to do the introduction. What do you say? Hi. And? Good morning, people in my internet. Good morning, people in the internet. Welcome back to Sustainable Sierra YouTube channel. I'm Sierra. This is Mr. And this is Little Man. <laughs> yeah! And today is the best day ever. Well, I don't know if it's the best day ever, but it's the best day we've had in weeks because, as you can tell by the title of this video, we are in Prague. I am back in Prague. Well, Mr. and I are back in Prague. And Little Man is here with us celebrating and visiting Prague for the very first time of his entire life, which is very exciting. Um, before I get into any more, I'm gonna do a little rewind for a second. Um, back in the day, from 2011 to 2013, I was an English teacher here in Prague, and I lived here for three years, and it was some of the best years of my life. Not the best years, but some of the best years of my entire life and I've been waiting for what is it like nine years now to bring my family back here and share as I said before mister has been here before as you guys can probably guess little man as I said before has never been here because he has not been alive long enough to have been here back when I lived here before but yeah um, we're gonna be in Prague for about a little less than two weeks and I'm very excited to share all of Prague with my family and share some special places with you. One thing I do wanna say is that I am not planning to film every single day of everything that we do in Prague because I have a lot of friends to catch up with and one, a lot of my Czech friends probably won't wanna be in camera and two, I don't think you guys wanna watch me sitting in pubs having beverages with my friends and chatting about stuff. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. So I'll show you guys what we're doing throughout the week a little bit and I hope that you guys enjoy this series and yeah, that's it. So we're gonna head out to Prague today. I think today we're playing tourist because it's the only day I think that I have no social engagements planned. So it's just our family. So we're gonna have lunch, hopefully at a vegan restaurant or a vegan friendly restaurant if they have a reservation available still. We're gonna see the Charles Bridge, Old Town, all that great stuff. So we're gonna get ready and put our shoes on and we'll see you guys in a bit. Prague wildlife. <laughs> Whoa. That one is cold. He looks like he's cold because he's puffing himself up. Hey guys, so we're in our first stop so far. Well, kind of. We're walking pretty much all the way through Old Town up to the castle today. But we are currently standing in Václav Náměstí, which is not as pretty from the angle I was just showing you, but now look how pretty it is. That's the National Museum, which you can see from Ipe Pavlova at night. And then if you turn all the way around to the bottom, the square goes all the way down there. Uh, if you recognize the square, either you've been to Prague before or you have known a bit of history. Um, historically, the square has been the site for a lot of protests and political demonstrations because it's right in the middle of the city and so it's a perfect place to do that. But uh, it looks pretty much the same as it did before. A lot of the businesses have changed and this building, I swear it's different than it was before. I could be lying, but I feel like it looks fancier now. Maybe I didn't notice when I lived here, but yeah, anyway, there's that. So anyways, otherwise pretty much everything looks the same minus some business changes. So we're gonna keep walking down to the New Yorker, which I'm sure is still open. Uh, they sell American style. I think it's like American style, the Czech version of American style clothing. So we're gonna walk down there. The horse is stuck. What's wrong with the horse? He's hanging on a string. Is that what's wrong with the horse? Are you sure that's what's wrong? He's on a string? It's upside down. Yeah, it's upside down, that's right. What do you think about that? You don't like it, no? Hey there, well that was really quick. Um, we're back at the next place I wanna show you that I show everyone who used to visit me when I lived here. Um, if you guys live in Prague, you know where I am. If not, I'm currently standing inside Lucerna, which is a shopping center, kind of. It's a building, and they have everything inside of it. Um, for example, there is a movie theater and a cafe but the thing that i really wanted to show you that i wanted to show a little man that you guys saw we'll see in the next clip is this guy it is a upside down horse with a man riding the horse i can't remember the name of the artist who made it but there are a lot of statues and things similar like this all over prague i'll show you another one either in this video or in the next one i don't know when it's going to come up but um he kind of prides himself in making unusual art and putting it in public places so here we have the horse that's upside down with the man riding him because why the heck not? Oh, 
Did you find something interesting? What is that? Did you find something else? Some toys? Yeah, of course you did. Uh, kids, like he's got like a toy dar. If there's a toy present or a toy shop anywhere within his area, he'll find it. Whoa. Slow and soft. Whoa, cool. <laughs> What do you do with it? Open it. You can open a nut with it, that's right. You go all the way down, you don't have a nutcracker. Hey there guys, um, so as you can see, we are now walking through a market. Um, we're actually walking through the Havelska Triste, which is the Havel outdoor market. It is pretty much halfway between Old Town Square and Vatsatsa Namnesti. They have all kinds of things here, and it's one of the more affordable places that you come come to get Czech or Czech-ish souvenirs. Uh, it's also kind of a little farmer's market, but before you buy anything at the farmer's market, be incredibly careful and check the prices. For example, here, it says the mixed fruit is 29 crowns, but that's for 100 grams, not for the whole basket. And that basket, I would say, is probably at least 300 grams. So you have to think about that. It's not 30 crowns, but there's all kinds of things. I said it's like a little farmer's market, so if it's okay price, you just have to know what you're shopping for. And then here, this is actually the front of it. You can see that's the actual farmer's market area, and you can see that the food is actually reasonably priced. So, for example, like, you can get this cabbage for only 25 crowns. Um, and they have lots of little Czech souvenirs here and some nutcrackers apparently. Maybe they're getting ready for Christmas. I'm not so sure about that yet. Yeah, they are actually Christmas nutcrackers, but they also have things like this. All your magnets, mugs, beer signs, if that's something you wanna buy, they have those here. Um, lots of things with a little astronomical clock. I think my favorite thing from this area is no longer here. There used to be a stall that sold really beautiful paintings, which I think you guys have probably seen in our home tour or somewhere, maybe the background of my videos, but they don't sell them here anymore. And I'm sad because I wanted to buy some more, but I'm sure if I ask someone, I'll be able to find them somewhere. But yeah, I want to show it to you because I feel like a lot of tourists are worried to come here, but as long as you're careful and you're careful with your money, hang on to your wallet, you'll be completely fine. However, what I mentioned you have to be careful is I was talking about the proper like in-store shops on this side. Actually, the entire area on the way down to, to Old Town and then to Charles Ridge from here is full of these. You have to be very careful and know what you're buying and know what it's worth because if you don't know what it's worth and you don't look at the scale or on the pricing, they won't tell you. So there's something to think about while you are here. But um, one of my favorite things to buy here were always those synthetic scarves. Where are they? Right there? But once again, you have to make sure you check the quality of them because they are mass produced. What is it? The uh, door last night. Like the door you saw last night? Aw. He's already obsessed with Prague doors. <laughs> it does actually look a lot like the door from last night, actually, where our house is. So, as you can see, we are now inside a restaurant. We are currently at a vegetarian restaurant that has a ton of vegan options. And actually, when I lived in Prague, back in the day, I used to eat here a lot with my friends. We even went on a couple of dates here, so uh, former dates, if you're watching, don't worry, I remember. But the restaurant is called Leba, how do I say it? Like a Chava, and it means clear head. As I said, it's been around forever, and they have an amazing, huge menu. And I think almost half of it is vegan. Um, I'll just show you it really quickly, but it's here, and there's drinks on the other side. But my favorite thing about Czech restaurants in general, and even the vegan ones and vegetarian ones here, usually have something called a daily menu, where it's only available for this week, and that changes every week, which is exciting, because if you go to somewhere a lot, you kind of get tired of the dishes. But today's daily menu is a cauliflower spicy soup with udon noodles and tempeh so it should be pretty good and you can get it with either water or with wine or you can just get one of the two but i decided to get the full set because i'm on holiday and it's actually only 220 crowns for my entire meal whereas little man ordered the burger and his meal is almost 300 crowns so the menu is only rotating but it's also usually cheaper than the regular menu so anyway um inside this restaurant there's two really cool rooms i can't tell you the other ones we're not sitting in there but it's got this like green latticey um outside but this room is actually my favorite as i say we're sat here it's painted like the night sky
What are you gonna see? What person? You're gonna see a person? Where are you gonna see a person? Inside the window. Inside the window? Where's the window? Right there. Up there? See little people? Hey guys, haven't seen you in a bit. Welcome to Old Town Square. Uh, behind me is the astronomical clock. Where is it? It is right there. Um, let little man watch it for the first time. We were here just in time. And after it was done, he was like, well, that was kind of cool. And that was the only reaction. Which honestly, that's the reaction that I had the first time that I saw it. But I didn't think it was, you know, life changing or anything. But people come from everywhere to see it, so there you go. And then behind me, actually here, we're gonna turn around, is Tinska Church, which is really interesting, at least I think it's interesting. If you'll notice, one of the towers is smaller than the other, it's a little bit more narrow, and that's because apparently one of them is the male tower, and one is the female tower. So, call it whatever you want to call it, but I'll let you decide which one is which. And then, as we move forward and turn around, actually this wasn't here the first time that I was living in Prague, or the first time I was in Prague, this has been built, I think, in the past five years or so. There's this um, column here. Every European city has one, and Prague didn't have one, or they used to, and they took it out. I'm not sure which one, but it's to remember like war veterans and war memorials. And then here is the Jan Hus statue. If you've ever heard of the Hussite Church, Jan Hus, there he is. So, and then over here is the St. Nicholas Church. I think that's what it's called. Uh, it has a really beautiful and Baroque interior still, and the paintings are still intact. It's incredible if you get a chance to see it, do. This is one more thing I want to show you in here. Here, um, it's kind of hard to see from here, so I'm going to kind of like change the angle a little bit. But that building right there is the building where we just saw the clock go off, the astronomical clock. Um, and if you look right here on the side of it, you'll notice how there is the white part and then there's the red part here. And then at the very bottom, there's kind of like a um, cut off part of a doorway. And that is because I don't know if it was a fire or a bomb, but back in the day there was either a fire or a bomb here that destroyed the entire half of the building. So actually that building used to go almost all the way to the end of this little park area here. But after it was taken off, I guess they just never rebuilt it, but they left the remnants of it so you could kind of use it as a memorial to the victims who were inside. So that's very interesting, something I didn't know when I lived in Prague, but I read about it after I left. So it's very interesting. Hello again guys. So we're leaving Old Town Square now and we're going down Fancy Street. See, Fancy Street. That's what Mr. calls it, it's Fancy Street. <laughs> uh, we're going down Prajitska Street, which is leading us into the Jewish Quarter, or the old Jewish Quarter um, part of the city. Um, back in the day, it's exactly like it sounds. It used to be kind of like a um, little oasis for Jewish people in the Czech Republic. And it was never destroyed during the Holocaust because Hitler apparently wanted to save it and preserve it to turn it into a museum of an extinguished race. I know it's awful, but the good news about that, I guess, is that we can still see it. I don't know, I don't know if there's actually a silver lining. And this is the old new synagogue I was talking about. It's the oldest in Prague, possibly one of the oldest in Europe, so they say. I think it's been rebuilt and changed a bit a few times, but there it is. It's actually really beautiful inside, but I can't show you on this trip because it's a paid entry. But if you're in Prague, it's definitely worth it. Hey there guys, um, I don't want to talk too loudly because as you guys can see I'm currently in an office building. Um, we're inside of Prague City Hall, I'll put a picture of the front of it here if you guys want to know where it is. Um, Prague City Hall is exactly as it sounds, it's just like your classic city hall. However, it has a little secret that I want to show you that not a lot of people know about. Um, well first, that's actually two. The first one is that there are public toilets, ladies around the back right next to the lift, and then gentlemen in the entrance and to the left, so you guys know where those are. But the awesome thing I want to show you that's really, really cool, and Little Man has obsessed with it, you guys can already see, is it has this magical elevator that can go all the way around. Watch. We are, as 
you guys can see, a very crowded area. We are walking down the Forest Street, which basically goes all the way from Old Town to Charles Bridge on Carlova Street. And from what I've heard, I don't know if it's still open or if they still have them, but there is a um, Trudelnik stand here, which has a vegan Trudelnik, which the one thing I have to say about Trudelnik, I know a lot of people check are upset about it because it's not Czech, which is absolutely true. Trudelnik is actually Hungarian, um, and I think it's called Trudlo in Hungarian. Oh, that, that might be wrong, so don't come after me. But um, it's like a cinnamon roll that has hollow in the middle, except for some reason now in Prague they're putting ice cream in the middle, which I think is really weird. But if you get over the fact that it's not Czech and that you shouldn't have ice cream in it and that it's Hungarian, it's really, really delicious. So let's go see if we can find ourselves some. but a lot of it is not Czech. Like all the like, Russian dolls. Why would the Czech Republic have Russian dolls? Three thousand, three thousand. What did we find? What, what is that called? It's called Trudelnik. Trudelnik, yeah, we found the vegan Trudelnik. Um, there's a store here, it's called Sweet Dreams. It is on uh, Karlovska Street, which is the one that goes towards Charles Bridge. Charles Bridge is just up that way. And apparently they sell them vegan, but for some reason it's not advertised on the sign. What do you think? Vegan. Yeah, exactly my point, punk. bridge next to Charles Bridge. It's fine. Every kid does it, right? <laughs> you making a funny face? Of course you are. That's my boy. Daddy's not making any face. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love Prague so much. You know, every time I see photos of this place, I remember why I love Prague so much. It's just incredible. It's a beautiful city. It is. It's like the most beautiful city in the whole world. Hey guys, so it is around 6.30, almost 7 p.m. right now, and it is time for us to kind of end our day. We ended up only doing Lissots and Omnesty shopping in Old Town, which is really fun, but little man is tired because his feet hurt, so he wants to go home, and I need to cook him dinner anyway. But I'm standing near Charles Bridge right now, and it's beautiful. I am going to move out of the photo just a second so you guys can actually see, because I know that the camera will focus on me. But look how incredible that is. Are y'all seeing this? It is incredible. And it's a great place to just come and hang out, take photos, and just enjoy the music because there's always music playing on Charles Bridge. So tomorrow we're going to see Star Charles Bridge, but as I said, Little Man is exhausted. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to our channel below, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye.